As always, this is Brett with Baseball Prospect Analysis, and today we're going to talk about Riley Pint. So first off, let me give you a little background of why I really wanted to make this video. I'm from the same grad class as Riley, actually, and I got to watch him play in a couple perfect game tournaments back in the day. Now, back in 2014, 2015, this kid basically came out of nowhere. Back then, rankings meant everything to my teammates and myself included. Most of us hovered in the top 50 of Wisconsin, and some, like myself, had made some national rankings, albeit nothing special. But we did make it. Every week, we would check out the rankings and then find the top prospects at our position and compare our showcase numbers. Now, disclaimer, looking back at it, it was an awful strategy. Many of us pitchers who were stuck in the upper 80s range would deliberately overthrow in games, hoping to hit that 90 plus just to boost our rankings. And then we would get a lacked commander high effort added to our scouting reports, which definitely sucked. Then one day, seemingly out of nowhere, Riley Pine appeared in the top five nationally with a listed velo of 98 miles per hour in 2014. We all thought it was a fluke or maybe a bad radar reading, but no. There was a kid out there literally shoving 8 to 10 miles an hour faster than us. You also have to remember, back in 2014, 16-year-olds throwing 90 plus was not common let alone 98. In 2020, most nationally top-ranked 16-year-olds are 90+. plus. Things have certainly changed. Pine was a 2016 right-hand pitcher out of Lenexa, Kansas. Lenexa? Let's call it Lenexa, who was 6'4 and around 200 pounds. Long levers, very athletic, and extremely projectable build. He possessed a mid-90s fastball with plus run and sink, a low-80s power curveball that at times showed impressive depth and developing changeup. An elite level arm with potential number one starter stuff, but still struggles to repeat mechanics. However, he is still young and has plenty of time to refine them. So you have to remember, in 2020, this report would clearly make you a high draft interest player. However, the odds of you going top five would be slim, due to the recent history of power armed, right handed high school players. But back in 2014, this report certainly made you a lottery pick favorite. Fast forward two years, and sure enough, Pint was selected fourth overall by the Rockies and inked a $4.8 million signing bonus. This led many fans like me to believe that he would breeze through the minors in two to three years at most. At this point, Pine had already exceeded 100 miles an hour on the gun, and many Rockies fans couldn't wait to see him develop. He started off rocky, no pun intended, in his debut season, posting a 5.35 ERA with 5.6 walks per game. Now this was a red flag and a foreshadowing of what's to come, but many wrote it off as he was among the youngest in the league and only had 37 frames of work under his belt. He ended 2016 ranked number 2 in the Rocky system and number 46 overall in the minors by Baseball America. In 2017, Pine got much more action, but the numbers again were concerning. He totaled 93 innings, a 5.42 ERA, and a 5.7 walks per game, while only striking out 7.6 batters per game. But once again, fans and coaches remained optimistic. His ceiling was so high despite what seemed to be a very low floor. As before, his mechanics and lack of consistency were the main factors in these numbers. Add on the fact they took away a couple of his pitches so he could focus on his fastball command, and these numbers don't seem as bad. Sure, they aren't good but still no reason to change the direction the organization is taking with him. All of his stuff is plus or better when it comes to action, but consistency is what's killing him. At the end of 2017, Baseball America had Pine ranked number 3 in the Rocky system, but only 99th overall in the minors now. Greg Goldstein, a baseball prospectus, claimed the risk for Pint was extreme, but still has top tier stuff that could convert as he continues to develop. Now we are going to lump 2018 and 2019 together since both were plagued with injury. He started 2018 with forearm stiffness, then started to come back, just to be met with an oblique injury. Fast forward to 2019, and he was shut down in June due to shoulder tendonitis. This resulted in him only throwing 26 innings in two years. In 2019, his numbers were nightmarish, posting an 8.66 ERA, 15.8 walks per game, and 18 wild pitches and 6 hit batters in 17 innings. He did strike out 23, but the stats speak for themselves. At this point, many scouts believe Pint's upside would be in the bullpen being a potential MLB closer with stuff that could back it up. This would lower his usage, which would help protect from injury, and also would play much more favorable in his high-effort, inconsistent mechanics. You don't necessarily have to be pinpointing the MLB as a closer if you have triple-digit stuff with plus secondaries. At the end of 2019, almost all major polls had Pint unranked in the minors, and somewhere in the 10-15 to 15 rank organization-wise. As of October 2020, Pint has been pitching in the Arizona Instructional League, yielding mixed results. A once 6'4 pint is now 6'7 with even longer limbs. Though impressive and even more projectable, pint still has some serious issues. Four years in and his mechanics have gotten smoother, 
but essentially he's the same spot he was in 2017. A high risk, high reward prospect who is extremely raw when you consider his age. On top of this glaring issue, news regarding Pint's mental state has gotten out. The Rockies have been refusing any direct interviews with Pint to keep his confidence in place. I would personally have to agree with their decision. Pint has never come off as an egotistical type and always seemed to be somewhat introverted or maybe just a little quiet to me. Getting Riley confident in his stuff again and pushing away any direct, possibly negative media attention seems like a reasonable step to setting him on the right path. So now let me give you my personal take on this situation. In a perfect world where life-changing money to go pro didn't exist, Riley would have gone to LSU. If he made that move, I think Pine would be in AAA by now. Getting those development years at LSU while also being the guy, I think would have done him wonders regarding his confidence and approach, as well as his consistency. But no one in their right mind would turn down $4.8 million. And no, I'm not saying I wish baseball players had to go to college first. I'm saying in my opinion, it would have put Pint in a better situation. And for the record, I love the fact that baseball gives you the option to go college or pro. But that didn't happen. So where do we go from here? Well, first, let me say I'm much more optimistic about Pine's career rather than someone like Brady Aiken. Pine's stuff is still there and just needs to be harnessed. Personally, I'd love to see Pine as a closer, triple-digit moving stuff, plus breaking balls, and high energy. Sounds like a good fit to me. Of course, it'll do him no use if he still struggles with consistency. But if he's able to give one or two good to great innings and develop within his new frame, it's going to be extremely fun to watch. The possibility of him reaching 106 with his fastball and a high 80s to low 90s slider is truly special. I think it's possible, but I wouldn't say probable. My hope is he actually gets dropped by Colorado and picked up by someone else. A change in scenery and instruction could prove vital. At the end of the day, Pint is still a huge mystery and no one knows what will happen. As someone who has seen him play, listened to him talk, and watched him interact with media, I have to say, character-wise, he's a great person. That is my main reason for hoping he comes out on top. I truly think he deserves it and still has the tools to be that guy that everyone envisioned him becoming when he was only 16. I sincerely hope all of you guys are doing well and staying safe out there. And I'll see you guys all next week with a new video. Have a great one guys. See you later.